All right, Amanda, the show is yours. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, by way of introduction, I'll go ahead and just dive head first in. So my name is Amanda Ryu, and I am an account exec with JobScan. Uh, I'll tell you all about JobScan here uh, kind of throughout the presentation. Uh, but tonight, I kind of wanted to hit on a few things about uh, both the job scan tool and just some general information as you all might be going out and applying to different opportunities out there. Uh, but before I get started, and and you can either put a thumbs up in the chat or if you're on screen, you can just give me that thumbs up. But I wanted to ask how many people have applied to jobs and either gotten that automatic rejection email uh, or not gotten to the interview stage as they've kind of sent in those applications. Has that happened to you all? Yep, I'm seeing, some, I'm seeing some thumbs up. All right. Um, so part of the reason we'll, is going to be this thing called the applicant tracking system. Um, we're going to talk about what those things are, uh, how they work exactly, and then also some things that you can do to actually get your resume through these systems. Uh, and then we'll kind of close out uh, just talking, and I'm going to talk pretty quick to move through everything to be able to show you all. Um, then we're going to talk about some of the free tools that JobScan has that can help you out with your own job search. So we'll go ahead and dive head first in. Um, so an applicant tracking system, just to kind of ground everyone in exactly what this is, is these are those systems that are basically HR is using when they have a, a job listing that you might either be filling out a form online or uploading your resume to a what they call the applicant tracking system. So what these things are doing are they are going to be scanning your resume, making sure that you are a fit for the job, you have the right skills, and just a number of different things. So uh, as you can imagine, and this is going to be what is preventing you or getting in the way of you getting to the interview stage. Because um, so more often than not, as people are applying to many jobs online, they're not reaching that stage in the process. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. And I can always share this presentation uh, with you all. At, um, and Jessica, I can share this with you too. Um, and you all can take a look at any of these videos and other links that I'm going to have contained in here just for kind of future reference. So how, how pervasive out there are these applicant tracking systems? Well, I can tell you 99% of Fortune 500 companies are using them, 66% of large companies, and 35% of small companies are using these systems. So it is becoming increasingly prevalent, uh, and even smaller organizations, even as small as 30 people, um, are using applicant tracking systems. So as you can imagine, they are just everywhere. <laughs> Um, and they're growing because they are becoming more accessible to many employers because they are becoming more cost uh, prohibitive or cost efficient, excuse me. Uh, so that's why many of them have adopted it. To give you just a quick breakdown, uh, these are some of the popular ones. More than more than likely, you've actually applied to one of through one of these systems. You might not realize it, right. uh, but these are a few of the big ones out there on the market. I'm not going to spend a ton of time digging into all of them. Um, but there are things to give you an example that you can be aware of that I can tell you with iSIMS, one of the kind of nifty things if you are applying through a job that is going through an iSIMS applicant tracking system is that you're going to want to make sure your hard skills are appearing more frequently because their rating system actually will rank you higher if you have that hard skill in there at least a couple times. Uh, so we'll, uh, dig into some other things here too, but just to give you a quick breakdown. So how exactly do these systems kind of narrow uh, the narrow down the, the applicant pool? Well, first is going to be that automatic rankings against the job description, how well you stack up. It's going to also include things like resume scoring through keyword searches and then also pre-screen knockout questions. Uh, so we'll talk about all of these here in just a second. Um, so automatic rankings, uh, as you can probably imagine, uh, when you're going through a system, there's going to be that first page and it's going to show the people that are going to be the best fit, if you will, based off of uh, it can be a combination of the way that the questions were answered, keywords, different things about how a candidate is uh, uh, looks to the system as as you've applied as you know, based off of your resume. Uh, so again, this can be kind of a combination of things, and these can be custom criteria that the kind of recruiter sets in place, depending on the system that they're using. But it's good to know that this is something that can kind of also get in the way, uh, because you want to make sure that you are obviously appearing as high in the ranking system as possible, because those are obviously the people that they're going to reach out to first to schedule those interviews. 
Um, next up is going to be keyword searches. So this is oftentimes what is going to be very helpful and important um, to make sure that your resume contains the right keywords. Uh, Job scans tool actually will help with some of that, and I'll show you how in just a second. Um, but again, you have to think that when recruiters are looking, even if they are not even going through an applicant tracking system, uh, I can tell you from having hired individuals myself and probably people on the call have done that as well. You're looking at a resume and you're looking and picking out those skills, even if you're not a computer system looking for them. So again, making sure you have the right skills in there is going to be important. A generic resume is not going to cut it and is not going to get you to that interview stage. Um, knockout questions are gonna be things that probably recognize some of these. Do you have at least two years experience in X, Y, and Z field, for example? Um, so that can definitely be something to kind of get, get give you an example of some knockout questions. Now, these are, are harder because they tend to be a yes, no um, kind of thing. You either have the experience or you don't. So, uh, but it can be helpful to know as you are going through the process that the applicant tracking system is also taking those into consideration of your application as you are moving through the process. So what exactly, and I know I'm moving quick, uh, but what does this all mean for you exactly? Because again, not every resume, not every application is actually going to be viewed by a human being. So what we're going to want you to do, and there's going to be some things that I can tell you tonight that you can do to beat this ATS, is going to be things like creating an a uh, ATS-friendly resume Things like making sure you don't have tables, text boxes, charts, uh, even columns can also uh, be problematic to the applicant tracking system. Uh, keep it simple. You're going to want to keep it styled very simple, not use those fancy form formats because they are not applicant tracking system friendly. Again, making sure that you optimize your resume each time for the against that particular job description. I know that might sound a little tedious. Uh, but job scan can help with some of that, make that definitely easier process for you. And then also you want to make sure you're not spamming uh, job boards as you're going through the process. Uh, again, if you're showing up in a system too many times, that's going to set off something for them. If you've, they have 10, open, 10 openings and you apply to all 10, or if you apply to 100 at the same company, it kind of sends some red flags up. <laughs> uh, so be, be cautious and be selective with what you're applying to. Um, and this is just to kind of give you an example of what what exactly is meant by optimization or that keyword optimization. You can see that the description is including words like customer service and sales. And you can see that these uh, examples here have some of that already woven into it, if you will. So that's going to be what you're going to want to do uh, with your own resumes as well. Uh, last couple things that I'll mention in terms of some uh, tricks and tips on this before I go into some of the tools that we have. Using a chronological resume is often going to be your best bet uh, because, as you can imagine, you got to think like a computer system. Uh, oftentimes, when you're trying to get to that interview stage, at least, is that the system is going to look at things and look at it as data, and you're going to want to try to have it as uh, kind of in that sequential order that's going to make sense. So, that kind of reverse chronological, if you will. Uh, try to use those more standardized section headings. Don't get fancy with it. Uh, keep it simple. Uh, so, instead of having, you know, I sometimes people want to put things like where I've been instead of work experience. Keep it simple. Go with exp work experience because, again, the computer is going to know what work experience is. It's not going to know things like where I've been. And then closing out with save, uh, you're going to want to ideally save your files as a docx because that is the most readable format uh, for an ATS. PDFs are somewhat readable, but you're going to want to be cautious and make sure that your file is not corrupted. So I often uh, recommend highlighting everything in your uh, PDF file and trying to copy that to a Word doc uh, to make sure that all your words are showing up because as you all probably have tried to highlight PDFs and documents before, unfortunately, sometimes the files aren't always, they're not all equal, they're not all readable. So Word doc will be your safest bet as you're kind of moving through the process. Um, last but not least, don't lie on your application. I know that goes without saying. Uh, we don't want you to lie about skills that you don't have, but there are ways to in include skills, uh, saying things in your summary statement that you are interested in acquiring those skills or looking to go down that, you know, that career path, different things like that. And then also, I know I've seen this out there. I don't know if this is something you all have heard, uh, but there, do not copy the entire job description on the second page and put it in a white font. I've had people ask me that. I've had people say that that's what they've done. 
don't recommend doing that because that's going to send some red flags up as well on the recruiter side. And they can often, they often pick that up. Uh, any questions so far on that? I know I rolled through that quick. And Jessica, how am I doing on time? Uh, you're doing, you're doing just great. Uh, I think you have about 10 more minutes. All right. Well, I hopefully I'll be able to roll through this pretty quickly then on. Uh, um, so I'll talk through what these tools are and then I'll actually show you all them here in action. Um, so job scan, what exactly is job scan? So I mentioned I'm from job scan, but I didn't tell you what it was exactly. So basically what we do is we use artificial intelligence and machine learning technology to help you understand the and analyze your resume against the job description to help you identify which keywords, skills, different things that need to be included, uh, and also to make sure that your resume is, app again, applicant tracking system friendly. Um, we have these uh, different, a number of free tools and resources on our site, uh, including our resume builder, uh, five free resume optimization scans per month. So these are things that you all can take advantage of right now by just creating an account. There's not going to be credit card information or anything like that. You can just sign on to the site, take, take advantage of this. Um, job, we also have our job tracker and uh, Google Chrome extension, uh, and I'll, I'll try to show you those here in just a second. And then last but not least, our career change tool. Um, so if you are in a, a, a career right now and then you're looking and not sure exactly where your skills align with other opportunities, you can actually use our career change tool by uploading your resume and it kind of projects you into different jobs out there that might be uh, of interest to you. So that's just to give you a kind of a quick breakdown. So um, our resume builder is very easy to use. I um, You can let, feel free to leverage this one if you do want to just easily pull it into an applicant tracking system friendly format. Um, you can play around with this. You can use this tool as many times as you would like. So this is something that you can go ahead and leverage. Um, the resume optimization tool I'll come back to and I'll show you how that one works here in action with those five free scans that I mentioned. Um, and so I'll come back to that one here in just a second. Um, the job tracker. Um, so I don't know how you all uh, stay organized as you're moving through the job search process. Uh, oh. In my four. Uh, in my former role, I actually used to, um, I worked with autistic job seekers at a nonprofit, and I would often have them use like a Google Doc or a, a Google Sheet to keep track of everything. Uh, the job tracker that we have makes that process a lot easier. It's going to save you time because you're able to repurpose your scan history. So all the scans that you've done into our system and kind of use it and move it through the process as you, you are going through the application and interview stage. And then the career change tool I just mentioned, uh, and let me actually show you the job scan tool in action. So, uh, so this is what this is going to look like when you get signed into the website. Uh, is you're going to get uh, a page here where I've gone ahead and I've uploaded my resume. I've copied in a job description. This can be for any job that you have identified. Doesn't matter the professional level. Doesn't matter the industry, because uh, our our tool is a universal tool that that works across all industries and professional uh, levels, if you will. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and scan this and bear with my internet here tonight. There we go. Um, so what is going to happen is you're going to get a match rate. Uh, and this is kind of your uh, general analysis of saying, well, this is how where you're at right now with your resume as it stacks up against the job description. Um, our system is going to recommend that you're going to be at a 75 percent before you uh, actually apply. I'll be honest, you can probably be around a 60 and I had job seekers even at a 60 landing interviews, but our system will recommend that you're at a 75. So you don't need to worry about getting to an 80 or 90. This is not a grade uh, in that capacity. So you don't have to worry about that. 75, you are not failing. You're still doing great. So <laughs> uh, just keep that in mind. Um, we also do have a uh, uh, excuse me, kind of a guided tutorial and walkthrough of how to use our system. So if any of this is new to you, we do have that available along with these little helper question marks that are kind of sprinkled throughout the system. So please feel free to use those uh, as you're kind of moving through uh, the process here. Um, so it will flag in case you do have and you are missing any key information. You can see I have no address information. You don't have to put your full physical address, but having at least a city and state is often recommended uh, and preferred by recruiters just so they're not calling you at random times when you might not be around, if, if you will, um, or if they're in different time zones. So keeping that in mind there. 
And then down here, so this is what, what JobScan is going to provide you. It's going to provide you a breakdown of and give you those exact keywords that you're going to want to get into your resume saying, okay, well, I have political science in my resume one time. It shows up in the job description once. So I'm good to go on that one. But it looks like this project coordination one is not showing up here. Um, so to give you an example to the resume and the job description that I scanned in today, the job is for a research and program coordinator in internship so you could see why this is a required skill based off of the st the skills contained in that resume and excuse me in the job description um, what's also nice about the system is that if you're trying to figure out very quickly what context the word databases is showing up in you can actually click on it and it's going to show you exactly where the word appears in the job description and if you do have it in your resume it's going to show up here kind of in this like bluish color um and if you had any variations, it will also flag for that as well. So database versus databases. Um, so basically, it's going to give you that down of things that you're going to want to include. Uh, and you can go back over to your resume, make those changes, get those keywords in there, rescan it into our system to kind of get a new score, see how you're stacking up. Uh, it does also break down soft skills because, uh, again, those are important. But these hard skills are going to be your high impact, going to be the most important ones to make sure you get in there. So definitely, definitely make sure that those are in your resume. Uh, and same thing goes, if you can get some of the soft skills in there, definitely recommended. And then also the other keywords. These often aren't quite as important. These aren't as big of a deal. Um, but if you can weave a few of these into kind of one of your descriptive bullet points, for example, if you had uh, research and project coordination experience in the education field or working with X, Y, and Z. Um, you can kind of string some of those words in there to, again, boost your score. Um, so to also point out, if job description does have a word appearing more frequently, it's going to depend on the applicant tracking system that you're applying for. You're going to want to try to at least get it in there one time if you can. Um, if there's uh, one that is so for example, if I go up here and public policy shows up twice, if I can get it in there twice and it makes sense, you're going to want to try to do that because that can help boost your score even more um, within certain applicant tracking systems. Um, and then kind of closing out here uh, does provide information on things like recruiter tips. And these are actual suggestions from recruiters, making sure that you have uh, you're not using terminology or words that would should be avoided. And then kind of includes also formatting tips to make sure that your resume, again, is an ATS friendly format. Um, so I will pause here, see if anyone has any questions, because I just rolled through that very, very fast. So <laughs> any questions or was this new for anyone? I'd be curious. It was new for me. Also new for me. Yeah. Is this just like, uh, just because I'm a, this is just basically a, 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 basically a tool to help us find jobs after, after we finish with this program. Was that question for me, Jay? Yes, sorry. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, I missed the, the front end of that. Yes, so this is just, this is something that you can utilize now um, to begin working on your resume, or you can begin utilizing it towards the end of your program, um, mm -hmm. just to kind of give you that boost and so that you are seen by those hiring agents. Okay, and now uh, as far as some of us here, you know, a lot of us are just vets and we've done other jobs, you know, inventory and, and uh, supply and things like that, you know, things that don't really apply to the tech world. So being that Amanda discussed having like a 75% uh, match rate on something like this for more, uh, for some people to be more, uh, you know, uh, want to hire us basically. When we leave this program, we have a lot of the skills that uh, will be required in these resumes to push us up to a 75%. You know what I mean? Because I mean, if you got one of us old vets and we're applying for a tech job, but our background is just infantry, that's probably not something they're looking for in the tech world. You know what I mean? So with the skills we learn here, once we apply all the knowledge in our resume from this program, will that help us kick our score up to 75%? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think Amanda can speak to this as well, but you can also include uh, transferable skills as well. So I think a lot of the skills that you probably have in previous experience can be transferable skills that you can include on your resume and um, highlight for future positions. 
Absolutely. And actually, one interesting thing, too, uh, that you can do, this is actually something that I used to have my job seekers do. If you're not sure of how you would stack up against a certain job or you're just not sure which skills they're specifically looking for, you can upload uh, your dream job, if you will, or an unrelated job even, and just see what skills they're asking for. Um, and, see, and for example, if you did it, now this is an internship, obviously you all would be going for much higher levels than that. But if, um, if for example, you came over here and you saw that, well, I don't have project coordination experience or I ha don't have it on my resume, but I have that experience, it's one of those things that you can come back to and kind of use it almost as like a skills analysis of saying, okay, well, these are the skills I need or I would need to acquire if I don't already have them, if that makes sense as well. So can be helpful on that front too. So. <laughs> Awesome. So Amanda, there's a couple of questions in the chat for you. Um, the first one is, uh, how does this compare to other job hunting and resume building sites such as like Indeed or Monster? Um, and you may be able to answer that. Great question. So there will probably be some similarities in terms of the resume building component. So this is our resume builder. Um, and I'm going to kind of move through this. This will probably look pretty similar. Um, but ours, I can tell you that our uh, form here, as you can see, it is very easy to use, and I'm just kind of clicking on stuff. Um, so this is going to allow you to kind of build that out very quickly and efficiently. Ours are all applicant tracking system friendly in terms of the style um, and format, so you don't have to worry about, you know, the format not being applicant tracking system friendly. That's kind of integ integrated within the context of the system. So uh, hopefully that helps on that. Uh, but the big differentiator between uh, um, our resume optimization tool, so that kind of scanning thing that I just did with that score, um, and precise is that, as you can probably imagine, Indeed and them don't really have that. They're not going to tell you exactly the keywords that you need and things like that. That's what we can provide you as well. And you don't have to, for example, you don't even have to use our builder. You can use any resume that you already have. So this is just, a, I show you this tool just as a, hey, if you want to use this, feel free to check this one out as well. Awesome. Um, and then the next question um, that we have is, does this site offer any live help from actual people with resume preparation, or is it just like automated assistance and tips? Great question. So it is um, there. We don't have career coaches that are on uh, on call or on a uh, chat, if you will. We do have chat. So if you ran into like a technical question or anything like that about the system, we would have that, but not the career coaching side. That would be um, that not provided through through JobScan, if that makes sense. The distinction there on that. Awesome, um, Alex P. I see that you raise your hand. You can unmute yourself. <laughs> If you had a question, yeah, I already have a resume. I, I made a, I made a resume when I became a dental assistant, like last year. So that's what I everything everything on it's pretty much set for our dental assistant. Okay, well. It, and Alex, you can use that if you want to use your current resume to just see how that is stacking up against any jobs that you might be interested in, maybe in the dental field. Uh, for example, you can do that. You don't have to use our, our uh, you don't have to use our builder tool. You, the uh, optimization tool doesn't matter what resume you're kind of using, if that makes sense. All right. <laughs> Perfect. Good question. And I think the last question that I see is, um, let's see, does this help? Uh, with generic resumes and if possible to generate biographies for things like a portfolio? Great question. So full transparency here. Uh, I wish I could say that yes, job scam would kind of give you that that kind of general generic piece. It's not, it really is intended to help you tailor it for the jobs. Um, so unfortunately it doesn't have that um, av you know, available uh, kind of within that. So unfortunately we don't have that. Um, and I, um, Answer that question. Sorry, let me answer that before I jump to the answer to this other question that I see here as well. <laughs> Are we good? All right, I'll right, answer this go. other question. Um, yep, Jessica, I think I'm losing you. Oh, oh no. Okay, yes, uh, you can answer the subscription one if there is an opportunity for subscription for individual basis. Yes, there is. So um, to kind of, uh, so the free version is going to give you the resume builder, um, the five free scans, um, the and the job 
tracker and I can actually show you the job tracker. Um, so you're going to be able to kind of, as you can see, move it through the process, pull in from your scan history, just kind of use this to stay organized. Now, the difference between the free and the paid, everything is unlimited in the paid version. So if you needed to scan your resume against 500 job description, you could do that. Um, so that's one big difference. Another big difference is going to be that you uh, unlock our LinkedIn optimization tool, which is going to help you tailor your LinkedIn profile for a, a type of a specific industry and uh, is also going to uh, unlock our cover letter tool, too. So and power edit. I forgot to mention that. Um, Power Edit is a tool that allows you to edit your resume in real time without having to leave the job scan system. So, uh, and I, I can quickly show you that. And let me go in here. So you can see that I'm at a 39 right now. If I started just adding some different words here um, to different things, I could actually see my score go up in real time. Um, it, your score can also go down in real time if you start taking out important skills that the system would flag for. Um, so that's kind of what is provided. Uh, there is information on our home page kind of under our pricing side down here. Uh, let me go all the way down if you are interested in kind of learning a bit more. So there are subscriptions. Um, it is kind of like a monthly based subscription or you can purchase it in like quarterly installments if you wanted to do that. Uh, so hopefully that helps on both of those questions. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much. All right, so just a little tidbit um, before you go and subscribe. Um, I think that's an awesome opportunity if that is something that you want to invest in because you're investing in your future. But um, us, all of us here at Bottega, we are actually uh, experimenting with this as well. So if that is something that you wanna be a part of our trial run, um, there's actually an opportunity for a $25 gift card um, if you will experiment with job scan and then report back to us uh, what you find, whether you find it useful or whatnot. But again, y'all go look at this and uh, check it out because I think it's a wonderful tool and something that is gonna be extremely helpful in your career searching pursuits, okay? Thank you so much, Amanda. Uh, I, I think I speak for everyone. We are all super appreciative of your time and showing us um, the platform as well as some you know, awesome tips and tricks. Um, so everyone, make sure you thank Amanda in the chat and we will move right along. Absolutely. Well, thank you all so much. And uh, the last thing I'll just mention is if you are ever looking for uh, helpful int or articles or anything like that, we have a whole blog and different things like that to check out. So definitely take advantage of that if you can. Um, but no, thank you all so much for having me tonight and really do appreciate it. So hope that was helpful <laughs> for everyone. So thank you. <laughs> I think it was more than helpful. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So you are more than welcome to hang out with us. And because um, next we are moving to Ryan, who's going to talk about Optifine. Um, but I also know that your time is valuable. So don't feel like you, you have to stay. But we have some pretty cool students. I will definitely stick around. I'd love to, to learn a little bit more. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Ryan, um, now is your time to kind of share with us a little bit about Outdefine. Hey, everyone. Jessica, thanks so much for having me. And Amanda, that was great. A lot to recommend uh, job scan to other people as well. Um, and so, no, super excited to be here. I'm the head of talent of Outdefine. I've been in the recruiting industry for about nine years, uh, worked from some big companies, uh, like SoFi um, and Galileo Financial Technologies and some smaller startups as well. And I've been out defined for about seven months. And I am a blockchain and we are a blockchain and crypto company um, that is creating a Web3 LinkedIn. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with you if that's okay. Then can everyone see my screen? Okay, perfect. So I'll define what we do is we're, we help people get jobs, whether it's web two, web two just means uh, any other technical job out there. Um, plural side, Qualtrics, uh, Microsoft, all web two type of companies. Uh, web three companies are gonna be like your Coinbase's, your uh, Galaxy Digital, a lot of different crypto companies are out there. You might have heard a lot of different things in the crypto news lately, but blockchain is the future. 
quantum computing is the future and building those skills uh, is going to get you guys awesome engineering jobs that are top paying. Um, I see uh, crypto engineer jobs paying anywhere from $150,000 to $350,000 per year uh, if you have the skills. And so I'm here to kind of tell you a little bit about Outdefine. And then if any of you guys are interested, give you guys tips and tricks on how to get into blockchain, Web3, crypto type of opportunities. Um, so you'll be able to come to this website in an hour. We're actually, this is our new website. Uh, it launches in an hour. And so we're backed by some really big investors right now. Um, and so we're creating a LinkedIn where you'll be able to create a profile and then take assessments on our platform. One thing that we think sucks about the recruiting process, especially for engineers like yourselves, is that you have every company you go to, you have to take a different assessment <laughs> and you're piled and piled upon different assessments. So if you do take ours, we can send it to all of our people, all of our companies that are on our platform. So you don't have to take any more assessments. You just take one and done. The cool thing about it is um, everyone gets vetted on our platform. So you'll talk to somebody on my team and get to know them. They will help you with any career advice. They are career advisors. Um, they're all international too. So they'll help you if you want to work globally, uh, remotely, if you like hybrid or on site. We'll help you with anything like that with the skills to do that. You can find Web2 and Web3 jobs and you can work on your own terms. We have freelancing jobs, we have contracting jobs, we have full time opportunities, um, depending on what you want more. Some people love contracting. If you don't like staying at the same job for six plus months, you can do small contracts. Um, we're not a staffing agency. There's no agency. There's no middleman. You can work directly on our platform. You can actually track your pay on our platform um, and then be part of our community. Um, I'll have uh, Jessica share our Discord where you can talk to other engineers and people that are in the space too to get tips and tricks as well. We're actually creating a token. Uh, our token uh, you'll earn our token. Um, you don't have to buy it at all. <laughs> uh, that's not what we want to do. We want to have a token where once you're on the uh, platform, you'll get our token. Once you do a vetting process, you'll get a token. Once you do an assessment, you get a token. And if you get hired through our platform, we're going to reward you and give you a token. And all of that will have a monetary value behind it where you can exchange it and actually earn income passively. So even when you're in the interview process with other companies, you guys are earning income. Uh, we feel bad for people that spend time, hundreds of hours applying for jobs, and they don't get any money for it, right? And you guys are working hard. And so as you get jobs on our platform, or even just search for jobs on our platform, uh, you'll be able to really monetize those efforts. Um, and then from here, a little bit about our company. So we have trusted talent all over the world. Um, we hire transparently. Uh, we don't have to talk to an agency. And then you'll get instant matches with companies. Once you create a profile, you can get on email lists or get tagged in jobs. And then you can actually use our token to get promoted on the first one um, in someone's ATS. So let's say you, you see those jobs on LinkedIn and it has 200, 300 applicants. You're like, oh, I'm going to be at the bottom of the pile you can actually use our token on jobs on our website to get to the top, um, which is super cool. And so um, what makes us trusted is we have assessments, we're human verified, like I said, and we're trusted on chain. And so all of these skills are on the blockchain as well. Um, and it's just not engineering too. We do uh, UI UX, product design, product manager, just engineering management, uh, jobs we see a lot in the blockchain space are developer uh, relations. Let's say you're not as passionate about writing code every day, but you like working with people. We get a lot of developer relation jobs too. Um, and then we get all your security, iOS, mobile, all types of stacks. And so the most common ones, just to let you know, that we see in the blockchain space specifically, uh, Golang and Rust, uh, React and Node, um, Tailwind's becoming really popular too. You're like, oh, that's just typical CSS, but people are really wanting that Tailwind experience. Um, but we see a lot of Rust, a lot of Golang, a lot of React and Node. Um, and then we see a lot of people wanting engineers that have microservices experience, whether uh, just because 
they have that containerization technology behind them and know how to work in containers instead of a monolith platform. Um, and so from there, the other cool thing that you'll be able to do is refer your friends. So let's say all of you guys are probably good friends with your students in your classes, you'll be able to refer people and earn income. So let's say you know one of the best Java engineers out there, you'll be able to refer them and earn bounties. And so we are setting up this, uh, this will be live in about two, three months, and you'll be able to earn up to five to $7,000 per referral um, and actually earn income just by knowing other people and networking. And so this is gonna be available for everybody. And so um, I think that's super cool. So you can uh, help your friends get jobs as well. And then the token itself, um, we are creating a DAO. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the DAO, but it's a decentralized autonomous organization where you guys, if you want something on the platform, uh, you guys can vote uh, quarterly and help us move on the product direction, how you want to go. The other thing that we're doing is creating NFTs to grow with your careers. And as <laughs> everyone's like, oh, NFTs, you'll be able to have your own NFT on the platform and use that either as your avatar and there'll be utility as it. Uh, you'll be able to mint it and stuff like that. If you want more information, I know some of you, this is going over your head, but for some of you, you can mint it and it can uh, kind of evolve and burn with your career. So some really cool NFTs coming out with our platform too that are like engineering specific. Um, and so this is kind of our roadmap right here where we're at. And so we're really excited to help people find jobs. We do have a lot of clients looking to hire from us already. And so I am hiring quite a bit. Um, we have a lot of React roles open. We have some C-sharp.net jobs open um, with our clients. So even though we're not an agency, people still wanting to tap into our network. Um, so how you do that is you join our discord community, you get vetted, and then we can send you openings, um, that you might be interested in. And so I'm here to help any way possible. Me and my team, I have four other people on my team too, uh, to help you guys get jobs. Um, and, hopefully explore a uh, crypto native <laughs> opportunity. Fantastic, fantastic. So Ryan and Amanda, this is both for you. Um, we have some students who would like to connect with you on LinkedIn and kind of ask some questions, um, I guess, privately. Um, instead of here on the, the Zoom call. But if you don't mind sharing your LinkedIn information, that would also be great. And then Ryan, we had a student ask if you could share the Discord link. Yeah, I'll do that right now. Fantastic. And if you guys have any further questions, feel free to put those in the chat as well. All right, and I think we have another question in the chat function. I think this one is geared to you, Ryan. Um, and is there any reassurance you could give people to see companies like FTX with everything they're going through and don't know how volatile the crypto industry is? Yeah, I mean, with FTX, that was super unfortunate. And then you've seen similar things with like Celsius and some other companies over leveraging themselves in the crypto community and losing a bunch of assets. <clears throat> but it's actually a good thing. It's not a good thing that it happened, but it's actually good because companies are going to be more transparent with your money with the crypto industry, right? Other companies like Coinbase, Binance are going to be more transparent on how they leverage your money and get that APY uh, when you stake on that. But I would encourage you to get all your funds onto some cold storage. Um, the crypto industry is about 10 years out from being from widespread adoption. And so one thing that I really uh, enjoyed is like, I worked at Taxbit that did uh, tax crypto accounting, and that's gonna be huge for regulation. Um, but I really like being part of the, a team that wants to create the future 
of decentralization, DeFi and uh, blockchain, and really help and connect with people that want to build. If I was able to get an opportunity at Google or Amazon or Yahoo uh, 15 years ago, that would have been awesome because you helped really create the foundation of the internet. And so, yeah, it's going to take some time. There are going to be a lot of hiccups, but I would just, there's a lot of tips. I have a lot of uh, information where to learn to protect yourself in the crypto community, but there's a lot of skills and a lot of people looking to hire in this industry. Fantastic. Um, Ryan, I'm, this may be a shot in the dark, but do you have any kind of tips or uh, tricks or anything for our students who may be entering into this tech, tech world? Yeah, I would say networking is super important. Um, I'm a recruiter. I love um, when people reach out to me, but what I would do is do your research first. Um, that's when when engineers just message me around and like, hey, Ryan, I need help finding a job. <laughs> well, that doesn't give me much information. There are tips and tricks of how you should message a recruiter. If you're looking at a company you're really interested in, do your research on them. Look at the jobs and uh, kind of sell yourself like, hey, I have React, I have Node, or I have these skill sets. I'm looking for a job. I'm really passionate about the space, whether it be healthcare, fintech, uh, e-commerce, transportation. Um, kind of sell yourself. If you're just asking for recruiter's help for a job, it, it's kind of a shot in the dark and they probably won't respond to you. But if it's very specific, like give a compliment, mention them by name, and then saying, hey, this is what I'm interested in. Can you help me? Awesome. And then if you guys are getting interviews, the number one problem with recruiting is ghosting. I'm sure all of you have been through the ghosting um, stage and ghosted by recruiters. The number one question I would ask is what is before the end of the call, what is the best way to get in touch with you? Because then you're giving accountability to the recruiter to saying, hey, I will provide feedback this way. Is it email? Is it phone? Is it text? And then you'll be able to um, get back to them uh, in a timely manner because it's a two-way conversation. Recruiters are kind of overloaded with jobs. Um, and so some, some jobs I've had in the past have over like three, 400 applicants. And it's like, hey, I can't get back to all these people. But if I have someone reach out that's very specific, I will get back to that person. And so that's just some tips and tricks. And then I say the people, especially for people just starting out their careers, uh, are the ones that take the time after class and study and really become passionate about like top technology out there and have a GitHub and like doing projects. And I, I really can get those people's jobs pretty fast with our clients. All right, I think there's a question for you, Ryan, in the chat. Uh, does Ryan cite Oh, I'm sorry, this one was directly to me. Sorry, <laughs> who sent this one to me? Um, is there a charge or a fee to use the site? No, not, not at all. It's 100% free for you guys. We want to put more money in your pockets um, and, and help you guys out. So no charge. We only charge the client if they hire you guys and to use our platform. And so no, no fee at all. All right, good three, uh, or good deal. So um, we have some other questions about like, what is the, what is your opinion of uh, web three university and do you help with internships? Web three university, I'm not familiar with it, um, but I'll check it out and connect with me offline Mark and I'll be able to give you feedback. I'll look into the program and, and see if it is a valuable resource. Um, and I know some places like Bottega are looking into blockchain in the future. And so hopefully, hopefully that comes sooner than later. Um, do, do we help with internships? Uh, we don't get many internships. Uh, we get more freelance opportunities. Um, uh, we, we don't wanna, a lot of internships don't get paid, unfortunately. We see throughout the economy right now. Um, so we do more like, junior level freelancers. It's like, hey, this isn't a top paying job, but if you want to do some freelancing for this brand new startup or you want to be a founding engineer and just do like an equity play, we see we see more stuff like that. 
Good questions, everybody. I like it. Excellent. All right, so we have we have about 14 more minutes um, until the top of the hour. So um, unless you have anything else to share, Ryan, um, we're just going to kind of open the floor. If any of you have any questions uh, for Amanda or Ryan, uh, we'll be here until 8, well, 8 p.m. my time. Um, and uh, you guys can ask those questions, OK? And be sure to thank Ryan as well in the chat. I always have to remind everybody, make sure you thank your speakers. <laughs> hey, Ryan, I got a question for you. Yeah, go ahead, Jake. Just curious, out of this program that we're in right now, some of us are just starting this program uh, with the full stack development program. Uh, has your company hired anybody from the school yet just with those credentials? No, I, I kind of just introduced myself to Jessica the other day. Oh, okay. And and so we're looking to uh, be a better partner and ally for Bottega alumni. And so hopefully in the short term future, we will be able to help you guys get jobs. Cool. Uh, thank you. Thank you for all your information, both of you and Amanda. All right. I think we have some uh, some questions. This one may be for you, Ryan. Uh, with someone not being in this field, i.e. the tech field, uh, what's the percent you would say are on someone getting a job? How I, I think the question is asking more of like how difficult it may be or what that process may look like. Yeah, I mean, in this uh, recession that we're experiencing, it's a little bit different to find jobs, right? Uh, people uh, on LinkedIn, it's going to be a lot more competitive on LinkedIn to find jobs. So you're going to have to utilize other job boards, which I think Amanda's product is going to be great at, is really tracking those jobs. Um, but what I would also think is you're going to have to um, look at different startups. Um, there's a lot of um, companies and legacy companies that maybe not be the most exciting technology or company you're super excited about, but I would just try to get your foot in the door uh, with a company, right? There's a lot of bigger companies that do hire a lot of junior entry level people. Um, and then I'm sure working with the people at Bottega too will help you find placements. Um, but I think it's a good percentage. I Most people I know that have gone through a dev bootcamp have gotten placed somewhere. And so you just have to not be as picky, but make sure that you enjoy the job, right? If you enjoy engineering, if you enjoy the team, look for the cultural side, but I wouldn't be too picky about it. Does that answer your question, Keith? Yeah, I was just uh, just trying to wonder, like getting into the field, getting your foot in the door, um, you know, just percentage on getting in, how overlooked with just being fresh into the industry do you get? I mean, do they actually give a chance to give you a job or are you just ghosted, you know, stuff like that? But it's uh, it's good. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I would you might have to do some research on LinkedIn. So I would say, hey, what does their engineering team consist of right now? Are there juniors on the team or, or is it just really senior engineers, right? As you're looking for jobs on LinkedIn specifically, as you go look at the jobs, follow the companies, look at who's on their team, that, that will give you a really good insight into the company if they do hire juniors, right? And you'd be like, oh, if they don't, I'm not maybe sure if it's the right fit, but I would always take the chance to apply. Good deal. Good Thank deal. you, Ryan. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I had a question for Ryan. Go ahead, Chris. Will, will your company be trading crypto as well as selling it, possibly, I guess? I mean, I'm not <laughs> sure that's included, right? <laughs> no, we're not a DEX. We're not an exchange. We're going to stay out of that. Um, but we will, our token will hopefully get listed onto Binance is the first one that we're targeting, and then hopefully KuCoin and Coinbase uh, by the end of next year. Okay, thank you. Out of curiosity, to, which blockchain does that run on? 
Uh, so, uh, Silvana, uh, if you guys are curious, I know our website's down right now. I just, just asked my CEO. Um, but tomorrow, our white paper does come out. So if you want to read our white paper and the utility of the coin, you guys are welcome to do that. It will be right on the outdefined.com website. But we are Solvana-based, and Solvana is a good company. Companies like Helium are backing it. And so even with this FTX downturn and FTX supporting Solana a little bit, uh, we feel like that is the best chain for a progression. So in that case, would you prefer, like, actually, I, I don't remember which student it was that just asked about your company and hiring from Bottega, but would that mean you would, like, as a side thing, would like some of the students to practice things like C++ or Rust, some sort of, is there any particular language that I guess your uh, stack runs on that you would like students to also have some knowledge in? Yeah, I mean, as long as you have like React and Node, we we have jobs for you. We don't see as many Java jobs, to be honest. Um, uh, but we do see a good amount of C Sharp, .NET, especially globally. We get a lot of jobs in Mexico and Europe and stuff using a lot of C Sharp, .NET. Um, but we will have a platform where you will be able to learn Solidity, uh, Moconto, uh, Cosmos SDK, some of these other hard to find uh, crypto languages or test nets like Truffle or Ganache. We will have places for you to learn on our platform as well. Cool. Thank you. You mentioned Golang. Um, how proficient would you suggest that like we if you're trying to play someone, they are in Golang? Um, I would say 25% of our jobs are in Golang. So I wouldn't say it's the majority, but I would say there, there is a good portion of our, what, 87 jobs right now. Okay, cool. Because I work with Golang at work, so I'm like, should I get into it or not? Yeah, I would recommend it. If you're passionate about the space, Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. That's the question I get the most, Austin, um, is if you know nothing about crypto, blockchain, YouTube. <laughs> go to YouTube, go find some people. Um, it's um, offline, Austin, I can recommend some people to follow. It's hard to know like what's real, what's not, what's scammy, what's because people are trying to like push promotions and a lot of people are paid on YouTube to create content for them specifically. Um, so yeah, YouTubing just how blockchain works, how crypto works. And then um, I would definitely follow Blockworks. It's a news agency that builds 100% in crypto. Just by reading this stuff every day, you'll get really familiar with what's happening in the industry and where to stay on top of it. And then there are a lot of crypto groups throughout the United States. And so if you go to LinkedIn, you can follow groups. Um, and there's events that happen all throughout the United States too. So I would look for some of those events and you can connect with people there. All right. It, it seems like everybody's kind of wrapping up. Um, so if you have those lasting thoughts, those lasting questions, be sure to put those in the chat. But um, we are going to go ahead and start closing out our time uh, tonight. I want to thank you again, Amanda and Ryan, for your time um, and sharing with our students all of the wonderful things that both of you have to offer them. Thanks no, so thank you me, again. You. Thank you. Excellent. Nice meeting everyone. <laughs> meeting you too. Thank you guys for taking your time and speaking to us. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been great. Excellent, excellent. And if you guys, um, if any of the students have extra questions, be sure to connect with Ryan and Amanda on LinkedIn and send them uh, your questions via LinkedIn and they will be happy to respond. All right, good deal. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording for tonight.